this is Don Call Tech Support, and in this video, we're taking a look at five different stock AMD CPU coolers. And we're using a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition as a reference point. AMD has been using the same mounting mechanism on its stock CPU coolers for quite some time, which makes it possible to use some of the older ones on the AM4 socket. The test system today consists of a MSI B450M Gaming Plus motherboard with dual rank 16GB memory running at 3200MHz CL16. The CPU is the AMD Ryzen R5 1600 running at 3.5GHz with 1.325 volts, with a load line calibration running on mode 3. I'm using a carbonat thermal pad instead of thermal paste because it is less messy than repasting between coolers and it offers very consistent performance. Now let's just get to it. This cooler came with the AMD Phenom 2 X4965 Black Edition, but it has been bundled with several other AMD CPUs as well. It features four copper heat pipes along with a copper base plate and this particular model uses a 70mm fan made by AVC. The next cooler came bundled with an AMD FX6100 and possibly other models as well. It features essentially a finned aluminium block with a 28mm copper slug in the middle. The fan on this model is also 70mm but it's made by Delta Electronics. The third cooler is the Wraith Stealth that is bundled with the R5-3600 among others. It is a finned aluminium block about 20mm tall without a fan. The fan is made by Cooler Master and the relationship with the 212 Black Edition fan is plain to see. This one is a bit smaller though at 100mm. Next up is the Wraith Spire that came bundled with the R5-1600. This is the version with the 35mm copper vapor chamber in the center surrounded by aluminium fins. The fan on this one is 100mm and is made by AVC. The largest AMD stock cooler is the Wraith Prism, as far as I know. This cooler is quite large and features four copper heat pipes, which is in direct contact with the CPU. The fan on this thing is 110mm, however the diameter of the fan blades themselves are the same as on the Spire and Stealth. This cooler is very similar in design to the Phenom 2 cooler, only larger. Uh, the fan also has a high and low setting, and for testing today we are only using the low setting. And this is the reference cooler in this roundup, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. This is a great cooler for a great price, it features 4 nickel plated copper heat pipes which are in direct contact with the heat spreader of the CPU, similar to the Wraith Prism. The tower cooler is 158.8mm tall and uses a very quiet 120mm fan. You can also mount another 120mm fan for push-pull configuration, but we will stick to push for this comparison. That is all the contenders in this roundup. Now we start off by looking at weight without the fans and the mounting gear. So the Hyper 212 Black Edition is 543 grams, just over half a kilogram. Then we have the Raid Prism at 398 grams, closely followed by the AMD FX cooler with the copper slug at 390 grams. Moving further down we find the Raid Spire at 298 grams. This is the version with the copper vapor chamber. Second to last is the Phenom 2 cooler uh, coming in at 262 grams and as no surprise to anyone the last place we have the Wraith Stealth at 183 grams. Now we're using the Idle 64 stress test running for 30 minutes and the package power of the CPU was around 100 watts. The ambient temperature was 22.5 degrees celsius for all coolers and we're using an open air test bench so case airflow is not a factor. In the first test we are using the standard fan curve on the motherboard and then we'll move on to testing with all the coolers running at the same noise level as the Cooler Master Hyper 212. The maximum temperature for the Ryzen 5 1600 is 95 degrees celsius according to AMD. Now let's look at temperature and noise and here we have the Hyper 212 in the lead at 59 degrees celsius, an excellent result as you would expect from a large tower cooler and it achieved this at a very quiet 40 dBA. Next up, at 4 degrees warmer we find the Wraith Prism. This is a good result, but it does come at a cost, which is noise. At 52 dBA it is more than twice as loud compared to the Hyper 212, 
but uh, we clearly have some headroom here, so it will be inter interesting to see how this does in the next round of tests. In third place we find the rate spire at 72 degrees Celsius, 9 degrees warmer than the prism, but it is less noisy at 48 dBA, coming in at 1 degree warmer is the Phenom 2 cooler, a decent result, but the noise is a real issue with this one. At 56 dBA, it is the loudest cooler in this test and way too loud for my liking. Behind that we have the FX cooler at 75 degrees Celsius. It is on the warm side, but the noise was surprisingly low at 45 dBA. In last place then is the rate stealth at 80 degrees Celsius. It's getting quite warm at this point, but we are still within safe limits. The noise wasn't too bad with this one either, at the same 45 dBA as the FX cooler. Now following is a short noise comparison between the coolers. Now then, what happens when we match the noise level to the Hyper 212 cooler? Let's take a look at the fan speed before we move on to temperature. So the 120mm fan of the Hyper 212 is running at 1616 RPM at 40 dBA. For the rate Stealth, 40 dBA which was reached at around 1800 RPM. The fan on the rate Spire hit the noise target even earlier at 1724 RPM, while the rate Prism hit 40 dBA at 1534 RPM. The FX cooler uses a smaller 70mm fan and this one hit 40 dBA at 2400 RPM, while the fan on the Phenom 2 cooler had to go all the way down to 1862 RPM to hit 40 dBA, essentially halving its RPM compared to the stock fan curve on the motherboard. Now let's see how this impacted temperatures. The Hyper 212 is still the baseline at 59 degrees Celsius. And we still find the rate prism in second place, but it's now at 74 degrees Celsius and an 11 degrees increase over the stock fan curve. However, it is in my opinion well worth it given the much lower noise level. In third place, we still find the rate spire at 80 degrees Celsius this time, an 8 degree increase compared to our previous result. And at 3 degrees warmer, we find the AMD FX cooler still within the safe zone though. Now behind that we have the rate stealth at second to last, which is surprising. However, at 91 degrees Celsius, it is technically within the safe limits, but I would not be comfortable running it at that temperature. Then in the decidedly last place, we have the AMD Phenom cooler at 97 degrees Celsius. And we are now above the safe limits, and I aborted the test well before the 30 minute mark this time. It is evident that the fan on this cooler really need high RPMs to be effective. So, there you have it then. The stock AMD cooler has decent performance, but if you value silence then the Hyper 212 Black Edition is in my opinion worth $35. And as a side note, I would much rather pay $35 for the Hyper 212 than pay $39 for the AMD Rate Max, which as far as I can tell is on par with the Rate Prism. But uh, in a pinch the stock AMD cooler will do the job. Now that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and farewell.